Hey, today I want to talk about how you can layer different background images or multiple background images and do some different cool effects to create different headers and interesting mastheads. So I'm starting off, I've got a couple of headers on this page with H1s. Just I'm going to show you two different things that we can do with layering them. So let's jump into the code and get started right away. I'm bringing in a railway font just to have a nice font that I can use in both places. My defaults that I have set up here, uh, using railway, I've got a default font size, I've picked a height for the header, and my font size inside that header is going to be just slightly smaller so that I've got one REM split, so half an REM on the top and the bottom. That's going to be about 10 pixels on the top and the bottom. And I'm using that same amount as my letter spacing. So the spaces, the gaps between the letters are going to be the same as what I've got in the top and the bottom, just to space things out nicely. And we've already got this effect. So the gap that we're seeing here is about the gap that we're going to get on the top and the bottom. All right, now let's jump into actually applying the CSS. As I was saying before, we've got the same HTML on the top and the bottom. So let's do the top one first. So dealing with the class V1, so version one. Background image, I'm sure you already know, we can just do this. We can say URL and I'm going to take one of my images here. I'm gonna take this beach one. I don't need to go up a level, just into the image folder. And then I'm gonna take that beach image, save that, jump back, there we go. Here I have my image. It's the top left corner right up here. This is where the image is sitting. So I can move that around a little bit using the background position. We could say background position. Let's just center it on the image and see what we get, what part of the image is going to be revealed. This is the image right here. And I got this from Unsplash. The link is at the top of my CSS there if you like this image. But we're revealing sort of this area right here. I'm going to jump down to this area on the screen. I want to get the center area being revealed. And that's what this center, or if I use center center, it's vertically and horizontally. There we go. So that's a little bit nicer. I'm going to now add the second layer to the background. So we're going to take multiple images. The other image that I'm going to use is this splatter pattern. Now I don't know how, how well this is going to show up on the video, but um, there's just sort of a, one of the darker colors from the image is sprayed here and it's scattered a little bit. It's mostly concentrated in this area right here, but it's going to give me a bit of a splatter pattern on top of this beach image. Now the way this works with the background image property is whatever order you put them in, that is the order of the images from closest to the user to furthest away. So the first image is going to be the one at the top of the stack and then you're putting things below behind that original image. So like this would be where I want to put this splatter image. So now it is going to be on top of the other image. There we go. And this is that splatter pattern. And you can see it almost looks kind of like surf splashing up just because of the image that I picked. There's going to be that subtle effect. Now we can play around with the color of the text. We can adjust how much of that image is being shown. And also, when you have multiple images, you have to make sure that you're doing the same thing with all of these. So this first value is going to apply to this one. The second value is going to apply to this one. If you don't specify additional values, it's going to be using the defaults. And I'm going to use background size as well. We can do something like that. There we go. So we're getting this. And I'm going to change the color of my text. Um, let's see here. V1 inside of that is my H1. And we're going to set the color on that to white. There we go. All right, so there's one effect. Just a very simple effect. I've layered multiple background images to get this effect. Now here, what I want to do is I want to have a black background and I'm going to use the text 
to reveal part of the image. So the only parts of those layers of images that you're going to see are going to be the ones where this text is. We're going to change the text color to transparent and use it to reveal the image in behind. So we'll start off with the second version here. All we're going to put inside the header, so you can see class V2 is just the header. All we're going to do inside of there, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit for you as well. I'm going to set the background color on the header to black. We could use some dark gray as well, but there we have it. There's the black. Now, the H1 that's sitting on top of this, it's going to it's a block element as well, so it's going to fill left to right automatically, and by giving it that default height of 8 REMs, that's how big this is going to be as well. We've got no padding set on it, and so it's going to fill this space and the gap in between these, this is actually the margin on the bottom of this first header and the margin on the bottom of the second. That's the overlap that we're getting right here. Or the two margins are overlapping to create that space. All right, so let's get into now the H1 that is inside of there. And this is where we're going to place the two layered background images. We're putting it on the H1 itself. Instead of putting it on the header, we're going to be putting it on this H1, or the second one actually. We're putting it here because this is where we want to reveal it. We're using the header as the container with the black, and now we're really just going to do the same thing that we did here. I copy that, paste it down inside of here. We're doing the same sort of thing. There it is. We've got the whole thing filled. So that's the size of the H1. It's the same as the size of the header. Now, with the background clip property, that's how we're going to reveal only the part of the image that's in behind these letters. So background clip. We're going to set that to text. Now, this is still considered to be a, a, an experimental property. So we also need to add in the WebKit version of this. So WebKit background clip is going to be text. We need both properties to make sure it's got the widest possible support. Okay, we don't see it here and that is because we've got the text still colored as black. So it's the same color as the background. I don't know if you can see it but there's actually some very faint lines around where the text letters are. So wherever there would be some anti-aliasing, we're actually seeing a little bit of the background image come through. We're going to change the color of the text to transparent. And there's another experimental property here, WebKit text fill color. I'm going to set that one to transparent. This is to support some of the older browsers. There was a brief period where this is what you needed to do with the WebKit background clip property. But there we have it. Now we have two different effects, two different headers, but still using multiple background images, creating those layers and giving us two really cool effects. So I hope that helps you out. If you want a copy of that, if you look down in the description, you can find a link to the code gist with all the code from this video. And as always, thanks for watching.